has a conversation with an individual where approximately 12 shots are fired, with at least six striking the victim, causing his demise. Needless to say, with the uh, potential organized crime angle to this story, it gets the utmost importance to the NYPD and the entire Detective Bureau. At the scene last night were members of Staten Island Homicide, 122 Squad, members of the Criminal Enterprise Division, as well as our federal counterparts with the FBI. It remains a very active homicide investigation at this point. I think it's a little preliminary to be making judgments on motive, but certainly uh, Mr. Calley's prior dealings, he has been uh, arrested prior by the feds, are a focal point at this point of the investigation, but nothing is being ruled out. I'll take some questions on this point. Miles? This is different uh, in that in the 80s and 90s, you didn't have the police technology that you have now. There was a report of a blue pickup truck that was seen leaving the location. You now have license plate, or, uh, plate reader technology and that kind of stuff. Can you talk about uh, that part of the investigation that relates to getaway car and also that, that advance as well? Like sure. Well, well, not only in this investigation, but in any investigation, we have the luxury um, we're in a very good place from an investigative point of view in 2019 compared to just a few years ago. I, I've publicly praised the work Jesse Tish has done many times. Um, license plate readers, the work our lab does, the video camera canvases, uh, the facial recognition tech, uh, technology, all of this builds a stronger case. All of this leads to where we are today in New York City. Uh, we, we are out there as we speak, as you know. Um, we have executed the warrant at that residence. We have uh, obtained video surveillance from that scene. We're uh, piecing together witness canvases, uh, extended video canvases. Um, there is reports of a car pulling away. That is accurate. Uh, that's not to make, again, it's a little preliminary to say that car is definitively tied to anything or that that's the only car or that there weren't additional people on foot. So this is a very early stage of this investigation uh, and we have a lot of work to do. Could you talk a little bit about um, especially where it was done outside his home, who was home, if his family was home, and also given like the previous mob boss crime family hits usually done away from their home how oh, this is different than some of the historical other heads so so what i will say is uh mr Cali was home at his residence again it was shortly after 9 p.m uh, our understanding is that he was home uh, with his members of his family i won't go into individual members he exits his house uh, there's a conversation, and it's a little preliminary, and there is uh, video accounts of what took place. I won't get too deep into it, but um, whether it was an altercation or a conversation, that remains to be seen. But he has a conversation with an individual in front of that residence, and that individual at some point in time, it's only about a minute into it, uh, pulls out a firearm and shots are fired. Do you know if it was a man or a woman in the car was seen? It, it appears to be a man, and this is very preliminary, uh, approximately 25 to 40 years of age. Did something prompt him to exit his house? Call that's, him? that's all part of the investigation, um, and, and it's a little preliminary to have definitive answers for you at this time. Um, he walks out of his house. Um, what prompted him is part of what we're trying to discern now, uh, whether he had uh, prior knowledge that somebody would be out there, did he expect somebody to be out there. Uh, we know that there was a vehicle accident in front of the residence. We believe that the victim's car was struck, uh, and that's part of the investigation as we move forward. Rocco? I'm sorry, Rocco first, and then... What was the accident? Are you suggesting it was an accident staged to get him out of the house? It, it, it appears, uh, with what we know at this point in time, that that was part of, uh, quite possible that that was part of a plan. That brings him outside as opposed to someone going in there? Not definitive at this point, but he certainly is involved, his car is involved in an accident with the individual that winds up shooting him. It's so it's that's, it's parked, his car is parked. That's not to say that he didn't know this person beforehand or not. So don't read too far into that. It's a little preliminary. Chief, is that, is that the car that was loaded onto a, I guess a police tow today, is that, is that his car or possibly a suspect's car? And is the truck in question uh, blue as first indicated or possibly silver? 
to be determined, Rocco. Um, you know, at night, video, witness statements, which we're still trying to narrow down. We do have a pickup truck that flees the scene, and we're very interested with that pickup truck, and we'll be putting out some photos of that uh, as soon as we get good information to would, put out. Would damage that pickup truck? We know that there will be damage. Um, how much? How much visible? We have a, uh, the victim's car, which sustained damage. Uh, we have a pickup truck that backed up into it. Uh, you can see on video that that uh, car belonging to the victim rocks significantly, so it took some force to do that. Whether there's visible damage to the car that pulled away remains to be seen, but it's quite possible. Although there is a, uh, it's a pickup truck, so there's a tow hitch. There may not be a lot of damage. You Tony? You talked about uh, Mr. Kelly's uh, uh, connections to organized crime that have been reported in court and out of court. Uh, are you looking into or liaising with any law enforcement people overseas in terms of <coughs> any possible connections that he may have had that may throw light into on this subject? What was the last part, overseas and then overseas what? Overseas that may throw a light, you know, some light into what happened. Sure. So uh, I was a little broad in the opening there. What It's been widely reported, as I said, his connections. Um, <clears throat> but this is preliminary, and I think it would be a little uh, er erring on our part to make any judgments. Um, certainly we're exploring what, what uh, his prior life or current life has connections to the incident last night. It also could have nothing to do with it. So we are at a very preliminary stage. Uh, we are ruling nothing out at this part. We are working very closely with our federal counterparts that we work with every day, quite frankly, as well as our criminal enterprise division and our local homicide squads. Just a couple more. You mentioned that hold, hold on, I'll get back to you. There were reports that he was also run over. Was that, is that something that you think? I believe, that, I believe that to be inaccurate at this time. Uh, what I believe happened, was uh, Mr. Cowley was struck several times by gunfire in trying to elude additional gunfire, uh, fled to the rear area of his private vehicle, and somebody probably thought he was run over, but it was more that he was trying to get underneath the truck to elude gunfire. Well, two questions. What kind of car does he have, and are his family and associates <coughs> cooperating with the investigation? Yeah, his private vehicle you're referring to? I, I believe that was a, a Cadillac SUV. Um, but I will, f I will firm that up that it was parked out in front of his residence uh, that was struck by the pickup truck. And is his family and his associates, uh, whatever they may be, cooperating with the investigation? Uh, no comment on that. But Chief, broadly speaking, when someone gets out in organized crime, there's always a concern about what that might mean. Yep. Chief Goddard was released about six months ago. Um, I'm sure he's on the radar. Has he been spoken to yet? So, so what I will say is there has been a... Um, and we were speaking about this earlier, there's been a, s several incidents, uh, whether you want to go back three months, six months, nine months, that, that being one of them. Um, we, we had an arrest just yesterday in New York City uh, from a 6-1 precinct, earlier homicide. Uh, we had the case in the Bronx earlier this year in the uh, 44th precinct, the shooting at the McDonald's. There's been a number of uh, not a lot, but a couple incidents. Uh, I, I would categorize it as more than we generally have seen in the last couple of years, and all of this will be part of the investigation going forward. What if any of these incidents are their connections or not? And it would be too preliminary to say that they are. In the back. Given the potential organized crime element, are you concerned about retaliation or you know, greater law war restarting? Yeah, I, I would just like to emphasize that, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the NYPD as a whole, this is what we do every day. We analyze any incident, whether it has a nexus to domestic violence, to drugs, potentially organized crime. Um, stopping future violence is what we do day in and day out with the deployment of resources, with Chief Monaghan, with all the resources that he has under him. Uh, I'm very confident that we can, uh, if there are chances for future violence between our partners, us, we will make sure that there is, a, you know, kept to a minimum, if you will. In terms of this, the person who was doing the shooting, you describe him as a male, uh, 25 to 30. Uh, anything more indicating uh, identity, race, uh, ethnic status? We'll have more to come shortly. Let's just get a little. Uh, we're about probably 14, 15 hours into this as we expand the canvas. Okay, one more, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Chief of ballistics recovered. Um, shell casings, 12 shots fired. There must have been some sort of Yeah, we have, uh, I believe, uh, 12 shell casings recovered at the scene, and, and uh, I believe it is from a 9-millimeter handgun.
last one. Um, with the video you did recover, does it show the actual shooting and does it show, uh, is it clear enough to identify the shooter himself from the yeah, video? I, I won't get into um, what we can identify or what we can't. You see an altercation uh, where shots are fired, what appears to be shots, muzzle flash coming from one individual to the other. Captures the shooting. All right, let's move on to any other topics you may have. Something else. All right, Marv's first one up. Um, can you uh, just uh, reaction to the department on the stop and frisk uh, report? Sure. So uh, clearly the court ruled against us in terms of the, the squibs. Right, is that what you're talking about, Miles? Oh, the ACLU. So let me back up then. Yeah, let me let me back up. So uh, I haven't read the report completely. Uh, we've seen the summary. Um, the stop and frisk, as you all know, we've been dealing with this now uh, since 2014 uh, when we began working with the monitor to roll out uh, uh, the remedial measures that they put into place. And so that's all still ongoing. Stop and frisk is, I would remind everyone, and, and just for clarification, because folks, when they talk about stop and frisk, or as we, as we tend to, re we prefer to refer to it as investigative encounters, um, it really is uh, a tool that, um, that we have that was provided by the Supreme Court back in, in 1968, under that case, Terry versus Ohio. And so uh, that tool is still um, uh, available to our officers. We expect our officers to, to use stop and frisk. Uh, and so that's just one point I wanted to make. But the second thing I would point I would make is, is when we talk about the, the report and some of the, what they summarize in there, um, is that, and you know this already, uh, stop and frisk, uh, it peaked in, in 2011 at about just about 684,000 stops. Uh, last year we ended with under 10,000, just over 10,000 stops. And so when you when you think about that, I mean it's just more you know 94, 95 percent decrease is pretty significant. Um, the the report is I think. Um, and some of the issues it raises uh, about the the challenges that we face uh, in their view with respect to the numbers um, again they're, they're relatively low and we're doing a great job the other thing i would add with respect to how our offices use stop and frisk we have a number of mechanisms in place and this is above and in addition to the remedial measures that the court is required but we also monitor um, the officers uh, activity uh, we monitor the way that they um, when they use stop and frisk uh, their, their, their immediate supervisors have to review those uh, those stops um, on a monthly basis now through our risk management bureau we pay a lot of attention to meeting with borough commanders on a regular basis to remind them of the the importance of keeping track of looking uh, looking at body one camera video um, and, and scrutinizing that video particularly in cases of stops there is also a pilot that's being conducted that you, I think you're aware of uh, that the, the federal monitor is conducting to look further at, at stop of, uh, stop and frisk as well and to get a sense of what those stops look like and, and whether or not those stops are being reported because that seems to be the, the gist of um, and, the, and the focal point of, of the report, that is that, that there is underreporting of stops. We monitor uh, and have determined that there are some, um, uh, some underreporting. Uh, uh, that's not a surprise necessarily, but I wouldn't ever classify it as being anything close to systemic, uh, as we as we um, as uh, based on our review, uh, regular reviews. All the questions. Is there any update to the body found in uh, Yep. So so earlier this week. Uh, members of the Detective Bureau were at a location within the confines of the 102nd Precinct. Uh, the genesis of uh, them getting there was essentially a woman coming forward to us and reporting uh, that a, a little over 40 years ago, she recalls now um, that a little over 40 years ago she was present at this house and, and uh, gave us information regarding the presence of a body that was buried within plastic bags in the backyard. Uh, members of the uh, 102 squad, Queen South Homicide, responded um, with a cadaver dog, which positively hit on the area. Uh, the ensuing search disclosed that uh, exactly where she recalled that the, the remains would be, we in fact did remain what we believe to be uh, human remains. Um, very active, very uh, preliminary regard to this case. Um, 
the the murder allegedly took place at a location um, possibly connected to a barbershop in Queens that we have not yet been able to locate but this inv investigation remains very active this has not been ruled a homicide as of yet we did have a uh, OCME anthropologist on the scene what we do know is that uh, we have a woman reporting that a homicide took place uh, the details are not all filled in as you can imagine over 40 years ago the occupants of the current house are not connected to who was there at that time um, but we do have partial remains bones if you will and, and we believe they are human remains did she provide any other context or tips or information like was she a witness to the homicide or was it just i know the body she, she did provide some uh, other information, and that remains part of the investigation that's moving forward. We have, uh, we have a lot of work to do on this case, as you can imagine. We have not been able to uh, locate an individual as of yet that reported missing, whether it's male or female. There is a lot of work to do in this case at this point. Did she explain, did something jog her memory? I mean, 40 years later, it's been a long time. Did she kind of give the background on why in 2019 or, or did was it, the it was more of the repressed memory as, as, as it was relayed. In terms of the, the remains, the bones that you do have, yep. uh, did the anthropologist say whether they were uh, able to say whether they're uh, female, give an approximate age of the remains? We're, we're not there yet, Tony, uh, and we do not have a complete skeleton. Uh, but we do believe we have human remains, and, and uh, in all likelihood, there's a strong possibility that this will turn into a homicide declaration. In the back. What is the process that you go through in a case like this that happened possibly for decades ago to talk about anthropologists? What do you go through? Well, that there's, there's, there's uh, a multitude of tracks that will all converge. We have the OCME playing a significant role in a case like this. The anthropologist, as I said, on the scene that is declaring to us, yes, these are in fact human remains. We have a number of jobs that takes place in New York City where it will turn out to be a, a pet buried in the backyard. Uh, the OCME now will jump in and determine, can we determine from what we have, and, and this is challenging at times, whether the bones that we now know are human, what caused death? Is there impacts from an ax, things of that nature? Are there gunshots? So there's a lot of work on the forensic side. I can tell you significantly on the detective side, we've already interviewed a number of people. Detectives have already flown out of state on this case. There's a lot of work going on, but this will be uh, a challenging case to make, as you can imagine, 40 some odd years. Rocco? Child from the town south, yep. that's been a hotel. Yep. And a woman um, possibly being or probably being, I guess, on Staten Island. Yeah. Can you update us on all the going to be arrested in both cases right sure. away, or is it going to be DH call? Sure. So, um, I'll start with the uh, that terrible incident from the hotel. I believe that was in December. I think uh, that was a fairly newsworthy case when. Uh, two women in the hotel in Manhattan with the baby in the stroller and that tragedy. Uh, I, I do expect an arrest to be made in that case. Um, wh when that case uh, occurred, we had a situation where two individuals took a bus to Manhattan from, uh, I believe, Delaware. Uh, at some point during their stay at that hotel, we, we discovered that the baby had passed away in that tragedy. There were some narcotics recovered at the time, uh, heroin, as I can recall and a significant amount. Um, with this uh, declaration of the homicide, I would expect uh, there will be charges filed, but there's some work to do here, Rocco. Um, what those charges will be, we, we do have some work to do, do uh, working together with the Manhattan DA's office to determine. Now